Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Big hello to all you new subscribers. Thanks for stopping in and joining us. Well, we are going to get right back on this 1988 Mercury 70 horsepower, 3 cylinder VRO that got thrown in a backyard. Um, gonna get back on that tilt and trim and uh, see if I can't get the upper part of the ram all buttoned up and everything and then give it a test and see if it actually works. So, and then it needs a whole lot more. So, let's get to it. Diablo! Okay, I took a Diablo. Diablo. And I cut off a piece of aluminum pipe. Then I cut off the thickness of the top of that bolt head and I put a slice through there so you could stick a screwdriver in there because these both fit real tight and then I smeared them with the old Antum geese little anises all over that now what those will do uh, get you over here and in here so I got to get you in here okay the little bushing the pipe bushing, get it off of here. It, I also have these, I got those bushings, hoping you can see it. I got those bushings, and then this bushing will go inside. That fits pretty good right there. Hopefully, you can see that fits pretty good. That will go in here, like so, and then that, this big bolt will come in through here, through these two up here, and I got bushings in there. And that should do it. So, that's my thinking on that. I got my wires, run right through. They don't look like they're going to get pinched in any kind of way. That's where the fill mitt went for the old tilt. So that's my, my thinking on it. Okay, I got everything in place. And I just got to get everything lined up. It's going right through. Yeehaw. Now. Get all the bushings. Now I've got to find a, a nut for that bolt, but this should be how it works. Shouldn't be no play in it. Now. Let's go. Okay, it's looking pretty good. Alright, so I'm gonna try and 
show you what I got here. Sorry about that. Sorry. I'm freehanding the camera. And you see, I put a big old fat washer there, and there's my ground off bolt head. I wouldn't even have needed to do that, but I didn't want it running, rubbing on the side of that motor, and it's not going to, because it's not going to get up that high. Just extra precautions, but I got nice bushings and everything in here. Now all I got to do is get me a nut, and I'm going to put a... Uh, lock washer there too and that'll be it I'll be back well now hopefully you can see there I'm holding the camera in my hand I'm gonna try and be as but I got a nice brass bolt or excuse me brass nut on the bolt plus a big thick lock washer then I ground that head like I said off of the bolt to make it thin so it don't hit the motor here. And that seems to work good. And uh, so, here we go. There is no play in it that I see anywhere. There you go. So, hopefully you can see in there. I still got to tighten that nut up, but we're looking pretty good. All the spacers, everything. All right, day. Well, now we all know what it means when I wear the hat. Somebody came bearing the gifts. Well, it's Christmas in October. Let's go look. Well, there they are sorry about the wind it's a little windy out today but we've got the pair of Johnson's come over this way the wind might be a little less noisy the fella come by and said hey you want to give me $50 each for these Johnson's oh it's not a true Christmas Oh, but that's a Christmas. Yeah, that's a Christmas. I show you, I show you. This one's missing the recoil. Ain't no biggie there. Out of any sees, but oh, they turn over. She feels like she's got. Well, is it in gear? Yeah, it's in gear. It's got good compression, that's for sure. Good compression. Overall, not bad. Got the old plastic top. Kabareba. But, turns over, goes in and out of gear. Hood latches ain't broke. 
did. This guy here turns over, feels like it's got good compressionis. So, what do we got? What do we got? This is an 89 made in Canada. Um, see this one. Oh yeah. This one. Wow. This one is an 04. So, 2004. In a 1989. Both of them turn over. Which is a good thing. They both look pretty complete. Both need a little recoil work. That ain't nothing but a thing. Even the foam inside. Now they're dirty. They just typical dirty. But now I'm going to show you the creme de la creme of this deal. At least for me it was. I liked it. So there's the tooth. A pair of Johnsons. But look at this stand he threw in with it. I like that. Isn't that a neat stand? Of course, I gotta cut them rusty bolts out of there and put stainless in there. Heck, that's nice enough. Stand that I might even... Uh, eh, brass probably wouldn't... I don't know, it fits down in there. They just kind of hold it there. So I might put brass bolts in that. That's a neat little stand. I like it. Yeah, I'll put me some caster wheels on that. Isn't that cool? Yeah. It's Christmas in October. Well, howdy, folks. Preston McClintock here. I'm up from the Lone Star State. Came up here to do a little big game prospecting, you know. Hoping to get me one of them there Kodiak bears. I hear they grow them big here. Kind of like everything we do down there in that Lone Star State. <laughs> well, now, stopped in here to see old Cody Bass. Long time acquaintance, you know. Well, I had a chance to meet a couple of these Alaskan uh, rustlers, you know. Let me tell you something. There ain't no Texan I would know that would just willy-nilly up and give away his Johnson. Ah, 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 ah. All righty, we got everything buttoned up on it. And I put it on this stand. This stand has caster wheels on it and can handle it. So I put a couple bolts of all in. And let's see. Techarood, Mercatech, even a blind squirrel finds a nut once in a while. So when we have these uh, easterly winds blow in here, these squalls, 
and the seas pick up, here's what some folks do. Now keep in mind, <laughs> in them waters right there, there are orcas. <laughs> Never heard of anybody being a cow. This is right out behind the house. And uh, this is what some of them do. Surfing Kodiak. Yeah. Kaboom. <laughs> they get some pretty good breakers in here. Ducks wish they would just leave them alone. the duck. There's the duck. That's a uh, female harlequin, I think. Come on, surfers. Do some surfing. That's a nice way. That's what they do. Okay, as long as we're on the uh, subjects of the tilt trims, I want to show you something else I just picked up. Guy had it on the local marketplace for a hundred bucks. So I thought I could use that. Here's what it is. Right there. A Panther model 55 and 135 outboard motor lift. See that? So, I thought this was kind of timely. Um, it shows in here, you know, the mounting instructions and stuff. But what's really neat for me, being that I'm doing the E-Tech installation of a tilt trim into a Mercury, it shows me how to, some switching options and such. So that's pretty neat. And then for this one, it's got the templates in there that you, you know, so you can cut and mount it and drill your holes right. So, it's got the, all the instructions and that should help me put that, make some kind of tilt switch for that mercury. And it also came with all the uh, hardware brackets. There's the up and down switch. And I don't know if I, yeah, there's your re switch relays and all, it came with all that. So this should come in handy for me when I get to the wiring switch portion of the Mercury 70. And uh, like I said, it came with all the bolts and, and it's, basically it's brand new. And let me see, are you in there? Are you in there? Are you in this? 
But yeah, I got I just got my power pack just like I did on the Mercury and you can see you can see it don't work. Where's my wire or something? Okay, now we're hot. Now we're hot. Whoops. Get in there. We're we hot? No, I ain't even got the metal. Stop that. There she goes. I ain't got a good connection here, but there you go. That cool. Then I can switch it right, right down. Yeah, this this gives me the uh, switching information. These teeth are so big on this power pack. I can't grab nothing small. You understand? But yeah, this is kind of cool and how timely. And uh, the price was really good. What do you think? Now, I'm looking at this bracket, and it's it's built well. The model 55 and 135 from Panther Sea Tech Marine, I think it's called. Yeah, by no, by Marine Tech. So I've got all the stuff, and I'm looking at this, you know, and this wouldn't be too hard to build out of some of them other tilt trims I got. To fabricate something like this would not be that hard. Well, I think I've showed you these before, but uh, when you're doing these fuel hoses, with these zip ties, don't use the regular square zip ties that have the, the little square head on the top. You want to use those that have that little curve like that. These are specially made for fuel hoses. You can get them off the old ePay. These are 8 inches long. And that's what I use for doing these fuel lines. And I was looking at these two, and I think I can get them without having to take off that, uh, eh, maybe not, I'm not sure. That one's got one, that one's got one. Yeah, I think I can, actually. But it'd be a lot easier to take it off. There's a lot of these ones. A lot of them. So, that one's got one, that one's got one, that one's got one. This one still don't have one. And you don't need this silly little zip tie gun. I have it, so I'm using it. But, regular screwdriver and needle nose will work, so. We got one, two, so I didn't have that one either. So I had about three of them that were missing. So, now, they're all good. And now I just gotta get this guy. Back on. There we go. Why is it acting all goofy like that? Don't make right. Don't feel right. We got a hose there. Oh, yeah, no, I got one there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. I can see everywhere. Felt a little better. There. And uh, so, <laughs> we got washers, we got nylocks. Let's 
So now we got hose clamps or ties on all them little fuel lines. Because the way they button some of these mercuries up, you would not want to be out there on the water and all of a sudden have gas start spraying out. Because it's a whole lot easier to put these nuts and bolts and such and things on in this little shop and it is out there hanging off the back of a boat. Speaking about hanging off the back of the boat, now I, you saw that jack plate I, I got for a hundred bucks there. Um, I think that would do real nice on my orange skiff with my Suzuki DT40 that I do intend to put electric start on. But, I do not um, have tilt on it. But with that jack plate, I could mount that right to the back of my orange, my bay runner skiff. And then, I'd be doing something. I recollect. Oops. Let's try this. The right Titan. I have to get that last one with a wrench. So, make sure that everything moves in there good. That's all free. test the linkages and everything seems to be moving somewhat appropriate in there and, and there and there everything's clear now we got this uh back piece with the brackets. Now I did find one of these bracket parts that's broke. I don't know if you can see it but I've got a bungee cord right here pulling this part in because this is broke. All this is broke. All these bracket mount pieces. But there's plenty of them on old Ipe. And I found one, so I either got to make the other piece, um, pieces, piece, piece, whatever you want to call it. I got to make that. And I went out and looked at the cowling, and it's just two pins on each side that go into these little funnel pieces. Well, I got the one bracket, and uh, I'll have to come up with something to make the other one. But, uh, let's see if I can find what it did with, what it did. Anyway, here's what I was talking about, those, uh, those deals. You see how that's flat? And how this one is rounded right in there? That's the difference. Fuel line, not fuel line. And I got somebody pulling up. Watch out for them little goblins. You guys have a safe Halloween. Alrighty, so here's the, the hood on it. Overall, I got lucky, I think, because it was obviously dropped on the, the back. Remember what I told you? I said, I don't think Mercury calls it VRO. It says, oil injected. But, on the one part of the hood, I've got the, uh, the latch. As you shut the door, that hooks over a piece on that side and pulls it shut, I guess. So a little cleaning up. It's got a few, almost looks like it's got some bullet holes in it. 
But you can see right here, it, it took a whop right there, but that's easy. Easy. Easy peasy repair there. But that's where it looked like it, it probably hit. There was a tree there too, so it probably hit the tree there and then the back back here. But it didn't bust anything there. Tore it up a little there. But here's those pins I was talking about that go down in that part that's broke. It's even got the original backup full start with instructions. Got some kind of card in here. Probably tells you. I don't know if I can get it out. Emergency starting procedures. Yeah. So it's got that. The foam ain't real bad. Little. I'll still glue it down and spray it. Let's see what it says. Power trim. Sorta. Of. Sorry about the bush plane. Taking them bar hunters out. Ticks. So. Mercury, power trim, oil injection, and then you got your little VRO sight glass, that's a little busted up, but it's still there. So the only place it took a real bad hit was the... Uh, that back piece of hood bracket. I got my uh, silencer all buttoned back up. And a few more pieces, but I gotta figure out where that goes. It goes somewhere, I'll figure it out. I'll look at the manual. Hey, there's thought. Yeah, I'm not sure where that goes exactly. Man, I got a little ear busted there. I can put a washer, a zippy there. But I got that all tidied up. Yippee! Well, we're about to... Uh, sitting out here, been running around here doing all kind of little things today. Uh, but that sun is going down behind the trees. And when that happens, it's already a little chilly out here. I'd say maybe 45-ish. But no wind or nothing. So it's been actually, once that blow came through, a really pretty day. And uh, we're just making the little baby trots on the mercury. And uh, I did get the uh, silencer and all that all buttoned up. And... Um, I managed to find one set of those hood brackets. I'll have to do a little fabrication and come up with something to get this hood on there. But uh, overall, she's coming right along. We got the tilt at least on there and functioning. But yeah, that sun's going down. It's getting a little chilly out. So I think I'm going to jump back inside and have me a cup of joe. So that is going to wrap this one up i want to thank you for watching one more hat from kodiak please like and subscribe to inside outboards with your host cody bass